For the following exercises, use the descriptions of each pair of lines given below to find the slopes of line 1 and line 2. Then is each pair of lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So let's take a look at line 1 here. It tells us now that line 1 passes through these two points, right? So imagine you have a graph, and I'm going to plot those two points. So 2, 3, remember it's always x, comma y. So we're going to go out 2 on the x-axis, so maybe that lives right around here, let's say. And then we got to go up to about 3, so 1, 2, 3. So the point here, 2, 3, would be right there. Now let's plot 4, negative 1. So now we're going to go out 4 on the x-axis, right? So we're going to go all the way out to there. Then we're going to drop down negative 1, so it looks like it's going to be there. Now we can just draw a line through those two points. And I don't know what's going on. Whoa, one more time. There we go. So this is what the line looks like. Okay, now what we have to do is we have to try to find the slope of this line. Now, you don't need to draw this, all right, but it just gives you a visual. Notice how this slope here is negative. Remember, whenever it starts high and it ends low, it's always a negative slope. If it were starting low and ending high, then, meaning starting low here, ending high, we always read kind of, you know, basically left to right, um, in most cases, um, this would be a positive slope, okay? So, let's hopefully uh, realize that the this should come out to be negative. So, slope formula. Remember that the slope of any line is going to be equal to the change in y, okay, divided by the change in x. And now remember that we can break that down. Anytime you have a change, this triangle represents change. It's basically the second value minus the first. Or another way to think about it is the final minus the initial. Okay, you can think about it either way. And then that's going to be divided by then x2 minus x1. So, notice how we really need two points. We need coordinates for the second point, let's say, and then coordinates for the first point. So what I'll do here is I'll call this my ones, all right, my x, this will be, let me just make that a little neater, this will be my x1, y1, and then I'll call this my x2, y2. You could have called it the opposite, you could have changed them, called the first set twos and the second set ones, it doesn't matter. We're going to arrive at the same answer. So now watch, all we're going to do is plug in then y2, which was negative 1, then minus y1, which we called 3. Divide that now by the x2 value, which we called 4 minus then the x1 value, which we called 2. And then, just do some math. So negative 1 minus 3 is going to be a negative 4. 4 minus 2 is a positive 2. And notice here how the slope here will work out to be negative 2. OMG-ness, isn't that what we said it should be? It should be negative. All right? So now, that's the slope. I'll call this m sub 1, meaning for slope 1. Okay? Let's take this and put it on a side. So that's the slope of line 1. Now, let's erase this beautiful work. And actually, you know what? I don't have to erase that. Let's just now keep the formula, but now we're going to do the same thing for line number two. Okay, I can plot the points if I want, but I'll, I'll save you guys on that, all right? Let's just get down to it. So, uh, let's say the five is going to be y2, so that's going to be five minus then three, divided then by x2, which is going to be eight minus six. And this is the slope, and we'll call this the slope of line two, m sub two. So 5 minus 3 is simply going to be 2, 8 minus 6 is going to be 2, and the slope here turns out to be a positive 1. Okay, so we found the slopes, right? Now let's see if we can compare. Because they ask us, right, is each pair of lines parallel, perpendicular, or neither? So in order for lines to be parallel, that means the slopes here, the slopes of these two lines have to be identical, meaning the same. Are they the same? No. So they're not uh, parallel. In order for lines to be perpendicular, they have to be negative reciprocals of one another. What I mean by that is, if this slope is a negative 2, remember that's the same thing as saying negative 2 over 1, right? Now what is the negative reciprocal of this value? Well, it turns out to be positive 1 over 2, right? Change the sign and basically flip that fraction. So is the second slope here one half? No, it's one. So they're not negative reciprocals either. Okay, so that means that, well, if they're not parallel and they're not perpendicular, guess what? The answer then is neither. Hopefully that makes sense. 
Now, let's take a look at our second example, which we always like to fly through. Watch how easily applied this is. We gotta find the slope of line one. We got two points, so as soon as you know, you gotta find the slope of a line and you know two points, you're always going right to our formula, change in y over change in x. Then you know that that is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Start by labeling your x1s and y1s, your x2s and y2s, and now just simply plug it in. So the slope of line one here is going to be five minus seven divided then by five minus one. And here we go, five minus seven is a negative two, five minus one is gonna be a positive four, and here we come up with a slope of negative one half. Okay, great, that's for line one. Let's just move this aside slightly, and let's now do it for line two. Same thing, these are gonna be the ones, these are gonna be my twos, and let's start plugging it on in. So the slope here of line two is gonna be uh, one minus then a negative three, careful with that. Notice how my y1 value here is a negative three. So you gotta be very careful. It's one, meaning y2, okay, minus my y1 value, which is negative three. Please use those parentheses. Then divide it now by my x2 value, which is one, minus then again, a negative one. Be careful. So now let's do the math. Double negative is essentially a positive. So it's basically one plus three, right, which is gonna be four. This is again a double negative, so that's essentially plus one, so that's going to be a two. And here we now arrive at the slope of line two is going to be two. Now, we realize that we have a fraction here and we have a fraction here, so, excuse me, <laughs> what, huh? We have a fraction here and we do not have a fraction here. What you wanna do for comparison is convert this into a fraction. Remember, you can always do that by taking any whole number and simply putting it over one. So what I'm gonna do is just write m2 is equal to then two over one. Now what we have to do is we have to find out or figure out whether these slopes are parallel, perpendicular, or neither. Are these the same? No, so therefore it's not parallel. Are these two going to be opposite reciprocals of one another? Well, this is negative and this is positive. So that's already a good start. They're going to be opposite signs. The next thing is, are these two fractions basically just flipped versions of each other? And the answer is yes, right? So guess what, ladies and gentlemen? That means that these two lines are indeed perpendicular. And there's the symbol for perpendicular. All right, so thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do hope this helped. If it did at all, help us out by hitting that subscribe button and hitting the like button. Best thing is, it's free to do that. Thank you.